There was an article uh, in 2006, and let me tell you uh, where it was. It was the Lexington Herald Leader, and it was on October 20th of 2006. It was called Two for the Money. It's a fantastic article, and it explains how coal miners, uh, not the miners themselves, but the ones that own the companies, of course, mining executives, pay money to the Republican Party, uh, namely Mitch McConnell, and his wife then becomes Secretary of Labor, and she becomes the head of mine and safety regulations, and they wind up with no, no or little regulations. Okay, little or none as far as regulations are concerned. So how does it break down? First of all, you've got to go back in time a little bit, right? So who's Elaine Chao and, and Mitch McConnell? Mitch McConnell is right now the current leader of the Republican Party in the Senate, but he's been running the National Republican Senatorial Committee, charged with raising money for the Republicans in the Senate for a long time. In 1993, he married Elaine Chao, who was a well-known conservative. Now, after the, she got married uh, to Mitch McConnell, a wonderful thing started to happen to Elaine Chao. She all of a sudden started getting a lot of contracts. One was people wanted her to sit on their boards of their companies. So they started paying her a lot of money to be on their boards. It's a nice little scam that's got, that they got going. That's point number one. Point number two is all of a sudden she was in high demand for giving speeches for a tremendous amount of money. Look at that. Business is all of a sudden interested in the wisdom, the great wisdom of Elaine Chow. And then the Heritage Foundation hired her for, at $200,000 a year. All this f money being funneled to the wife of one of the top Republicans in the country. Interesting how that works. Now, was there a price to pay for that? Or did they want something back for that money? Oh, you better believe it. So here's how it breaks down. First of all, uh, when Elaine Chow, uh, after she was done with the Heritage Foundation, Bush administration wins. And Bush thinks, I, who am I going to put as the Secretary of Labor? I mean, I'd love to have Elaine Chow married to Mitch McConnell, who we know is going to play ball, who we've already bought off with the Heritage Foundation, the speeches, the boards, etc. So he picks Elaine Chow. Now, once she gets it, becomes the head of labor, head of labor, that's when the dirty business begins. Okay, first of all, she hires D. Mark Wilson from, surprisingly, the Heritage Foundation to work within the Labor Department. Uh, do you know the report uh, that he filed when he was with the Heritage Foundation? It was called How to Close Down the Department of Labor. So that's the guy now uh, partly responsible for running the Department of Labor. Labor, but we're just getting warmed up. So who else does she hire? Okay, she goes on uh, to hire Deputy Labor Secretary Stephen Law, whose last job was helping Mitch McConnell bring in donors, like Bob Murray, who is a mining executive, and he helped to raise millions of dollars. Now he's inside, not Bob Murray, but the guy who raised money from Stephen Law is inside the Labor Department. All right, then we go to John Kaler and John Carell. They were executives at Cypress Amex Minerals Company of Englewood, Colorado, another mining company. The company's PAC gave $17,000 to McConnell and $15,000 to the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Well, wake, welcome to the Labor Department. Nice to have you here. Okay, gee, I wonder which direction they're going to go. Um, now, one of the other guys that was hired is a guy by the name of uh, Lorisky. Uh, he was later uh, he later left the Labor Department to tend to his family matters. Why? Because uh, the Inspector General questioned no bid contracts he gave within the mining field that fir went to firms connected to him. Huh. Well, you look at that. What a crazy surprise. But we're just getting warmed up. So they bring these guys in to do uh, the bidding. And oh, by the way, what I told you last week, <laughs> the, the even more egregious cases, two of the top executives for uh, Massey Energy, uh, the one that led to this disaster in the first place. They go inside uh, the government, the Bush administration. They're in charge of regulating the mining industry when they were just mining executives. And then, shockingly enough, when they're done in the Bush administration, they go back out and rejoin the boards of Massey Energy. Who could have seen that coming? Huh. And they make all that money, but all that money has consequences. But we're not done yet. So, uh, what uh, they load these guys up, some of, and some of the regulations all of a sudden get loosened. We're going to explain that to you in a little bit. But let's give you some details, right? Bob Murray was a guy who's a millionaire coal magnate, and he uh, 
was apparently in a showdown with some uh, mining officials uh, in uh, Morgantown, West Virginia. They said, look, you've got significant safety violations, and we're going to have to shut your mine down for a day because you have to fix the safety problems. Uh, well, he came in, he uh, got them gathered up, the government officials he did, and he yelled at them and said, quote, Mitch McConnell calls me one of the five finest men in America, and the last I checked, he was sleeping with your boss. And he pointed to two guys he didn't like and said, they are gone. He's telling the government who they're going to fire when they're supposed to be regulating him. Now, she sa he said, the last time I checked, he was sleeping with your boss, because that's his the wife of Mitch McConnell is Elaine Chow, who runs the Labor Department, who oversees mine regulations. Okay? So guess what happened to those two uh, officials at MSHA? Can you guess? Yeah, they were removed. <laughs> what a weird coincidence. Now, you want to guess how much uh, Murray has put into Republican uh, politics? All right, well, let's find out. Let's go to one of our uh, documents here. Yes, his company's political action committee has given about $360,000 in campaign donations since 2000, nearly all to Republicans, including Mitch McConnell. Murray personally has given about $100,000. Now, as I saw Bob Murray, I was, and I'm, I'm reading this article from 2006, from a paper in Kentucky, I was like, wait a minute, I know that guy. Where do I know that guy from? And that's because we did a story for, about him in 2007 about the great Utah mine disaster in 2007. And I remember that story because he had a record amount of fines for safety violations. And then guess what happened? Nine mine workers died in his mine. But that's okay, Mitch McConnell and Lane Chow got paid. And the Republican Party got paid. Okay, those guys died, who cares? Come on, capitalism! Let's get this thing going. But this isn't capitalism, they're buying the government. Even if you're a capitalist, this isn't how it's supposed to work. So, now that's Bob Murray. Now you remember, of course, the guy who runs uh, Massey, and that is Don Blankenship. Well, he's bought his share of Republicans as well. And we're going to get to him because he's the one, uh, who, his company is the one that uh, created the last disaster, where 29 people uh, died. But first, let me remind you of what we talked about last week. Massey Energy Company also had a massive coal slurry spill in uh, October of 2000, several hundred million gallons of toxic coal was dumped in uh, to the nearby rivers. And guess what? Before it was dumped in, they had warnings. Your pond, what, what they call a slurry retention pond, is unstable. It's not going to hold. And shockingly enough, Blankenship, as he usually does, ignored the regulators and said, oh, they don't know what they're talking about, government regulators. No, it'll hold except it didn't, and it was many times larger than the Exxon Valdez disaster. Okay, now, uh, you know how, but don't, don't worry, Blankenship has already donated to McConnell and, and through him to Elaine Chao. So guess who's the department of, head of the Department of Labor? Elaine Chao. Guess how much she decides to fine him for one of the largest ecological disasters in American history? $5,600. $5,600. Later, the EPA says that's nonsense and sues uh, Massey Energy for $2.4 billion. Later, uh, again, Blankenship works his, you know, works his trade and that gets reduced all the way down to $20 million. Does that cover the true cost? to the people that live in the, near those rivers, that live in West Virginia, Kentucky, etc. Hell no, not even close. Well, who's going to pay those costs? Well, those people are going to pay those costs, and the taxpayers are going to pay those costs. Who cares? So, now, he does all this, and I've got more for you. But here's the part that really gets under my skin. We now have a video of him. In 2009, he organized an anti-union rally. He spent a million dollars on this rally. He brought in Hank Williams Jr. He brought in Sean Hannity. Everybody gets paid. Everybody's having a good time. And they do a little rally. Uh, and the whole point is get the government out of Blankenship's hair, okay? Because he doesn't want to pay the fines. He doesn't want to do the 
safety regulations because it's going to cost them more money. You son of a bitch, why don't you spend the million dollars on the safety? Instead, his mind goes and blows up, but he spends the million bucks on Sean Hannity and Hank Williams Jr. and putting together an anti-union rally. Now, we have a small piece of tape from him on this. One, get a load of what he says. Two, get a load of what he's wearing. Let's watch. We also endure a Mine Safety and Health Administration that seeks power over coal miners versus improving their safety and their health. As someone who has overseen the mining of more coal than anyone else in the history of Central Appalachia, I know that the safety and health of coal miners is my most important job. I don't need Washington politicians to tell me that, and neither do you. But I also know, I also know that Washington and state politicians have no idea how to improve miner safety. The very idea that they care more about coal miner safety than we do is as silly as global warming. Yeah, as silly as global warming, right. Who, ca who cares more about safety than Don Blankenship? I mean, look, after all, he's wearing an American flag on his head and on his b body. Well, he must really love America. He didn't. The whole point of that rally was that he wouldn't have to do safety for his workers. So he wouldn't have to spend extra money on safety for his workers. And the result was 29 people died in, him, in his mind. But that's, look, it was, was it a fluke? Was it, hey, you know what, it could have happened to anybody. No, it wasn't a fluke. There, he has had over 3,000 uh, safety violations since 1995. 3,007 safety violations. Okay, now since uh, just this year, uh, first of all, in the last month, he had 53 new safety violations. They're piling up and they're piling up. Since 2009, he had 638 safety violations. He doesn't want to pay the bills. He does cute little rallies against Sean Hannity on his side and a couple of country singers on his side, and he thinks, oh, I'm covered. I, look, I'm wearing an American flag, as if he cares about his workers. Over one, over two point two million dollars in fines have been assessed against Massey's Upper Big Branch mine, South Mine since 1995, and that's just one of his mines, and that's with a lot of friendly governments on his side that he got those fines assessed, and he still hasn't paid seven hundred ninety. I'm sorry, he paid seven hundred ninety-one thousand, has not paid one million one point two eight, uh, etc. And his delinquent fines are also two hundred forty-six thousand dollars. He doesn't want to pay the fines. He doesn't want to pay the cost. Now. You might say, hey, look, if he doesn't do this, well, come on then. This thing is going to go out of business. You don't understand, Jenk. You don't understand capitalism at all. He's got to do this for the sake of his workers and so they can remain in business, right? It doesn't have anything to do with him. No, 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 it wouldn't. So let me find for you. Here it is. Blanket ships income. How much did he make? Because, I mean, he's got to have this kind of ruthless efficiency. Otherwise, they're going to go out of business. Everybody's going to lose their jobs, right? Last year, he made $23.7 million. He also had uh, use of a company jet and a company helicopter and several mansions with several servants. No, no, no. He had to do it. He couldn't pay those for the extra safety. He couldn't. It's not extra safety. For the absolutely required safety. He couldn't uh, be bothered to pay his violations for not doing the safety checks. And the people who aided and abetted him were Mitch McConnell and Elaine Chow. And the mining companies gave uh, Mitch McConnell's Senate campaign $400,000. Was it worth it, Mitch? Was it worth it? Since the article that I'm referring to from Kentucky, written in 2006, there have been three different mining disasters. They told you in the article, these guys are not being regulated. They fired 170 positions for mine safety and health. Now, if you fire 170 guys that are supposed to do the mine inspections, and you put the brakes on investigating them, that was another part of the story in Kentucky. Elaine Chow told the investigators, put the brakes on these investigations. After she told them to put the brakes on, on one particular investigation, uh, that was more safety violations in another Massey uh, mine, guess what happened? 
a fire broke out exactly as inspectors had warned about a couple of days before the fire, before Elaine Chow and the Labor Department told them to back down. And guess what happened? Two people burned uh, alive. Well, if you hire these people to gut the Labor Department, and they fire all the people who are supposed to be doing the inspecting, and they fill all the top positions with coal executives, so they can get more money to their Senate campaigns, to the National Republican Senatorial Committee, to Mitch McConnell himself, to Elaine Chow, so she can make more money from her speeches, her boards, the conservative think tanks. What do you think is going to happen? Exactly what happened. People died. Three disasters since then. The one that happened to Bob Murray's company, where nine people died. And then there was a Sago mine disaster, where uh, 12 people died. And now we had the Massey disaster, where 29 people died. These people got paid, and you died. Look, I, I don't, I, I don't, the whole concept of evil is one that I don't subscribe to. That's a complicated conversation for another day. But if you believe in evil, what is it? Is it getting paid while people that you view to be below you wind up dead in a cold, dark mine somewhere? Well, they were workers. Who cares? I got my money from Heritage Foundation. I have my private jets and my private helicopters, and I made $24 million, and I wear an American hat on my head. I, look, if that ain't evil, I don't know what evil is.